Hey, I've got a few things I want to talk about today. The first one is that poll that I ran. I ran a poll on what I what everyone wanted me to research further, and it was a mix between a few choices here. I'm just reading that right now. It was the poll of what long-term themes would you like me to see research further? I'm planning on researching all these because I, I do think they're strong long-term themes. But the results of that poll, which had a better sample size, it's still not great. It's not a really great sample size. I got 10 votes in the first one because I only ran it for a day. And the second poll I did for like four days and got 21 votes. So it's not super sample size, but the, the winner was the alternative energy with 42.9%. And next was AI and healthcare with 33%. And then third was XR, AR, smart glasses or optics. And the other choice is utilities, which got about 10%. But by far, it was the, the alternative energy and the AI and healthcare. So based on the, the responses I get and the engagement, it seems that the alternative energy and the AI yeah, and healthcare definitely do support the results of that poll. So. So I'll keep those in mind, you know, when I'm, when I'm posting, of course, I'll keep looking for the net current asset stocks, but I will definitely post more on the AI and healthcare and alternative energy and some on the XR AR glasses. Cause it seems like that, that breakthrough or the consumer products are a long way away anyway. So you all are pretty smart. So you probably even know that, that the, the, uh, XR, AR glasses are, according to the companies, at least, you know, a couple of years away. So, so that makes sense. You know, the, po the poll is pretty good, pretty good poll. So, you know, the first thing I want to talk about was these, these Chinese stocks, because, you know, the China, the Chinese, the Chinese market's been really ramping and uh, there's a lot of opportunities that I'm seeing on the short side. Some, some of these that have run up like 300%, so we'll jump into those. All right, these Chinese stocks, Chinese, let's check them out. We've got VNet that just had a big run. Of course, a lot of these have had huge runs. You know, the, the index is even up crazy amount past week or two. But this VNet was one that caught my eyes, a supernova. And it's actually, it's clearing some resistance there. Like it's got a level way back to there. So we'll watch that. Let's see if it stays below that level and it actually prints a, a bearish candle, like a really long bodied red candle or shooting star. It's a good, good short bias. This one doesn't have options that I saw, at least on my broker, but I do believe these ones that I'm about to talk about would be good shorts if you can't find shares. And some brokers have shares, some brokers don't. But if you got one that has shares, you know this could be a good intraday short. So I only, I, only really, I try not to short intraday, or I don't really anymore. And I just can't watch it all day. It's just, it's just more worth it to me to, to long puts anyway. So it's gonna be, get you a better return. So I, I, I will look for puts on. Some of these, I think one the YRD actually has puts this, and that's a good one too. I mean, look at this one. It went from four to nine. I mean, it already rejected there off off the that that nine level there. So let's see what it does. I mean, my guess is it's gonna gap up and then probably tank the rest of the day. But we'll see. I mean, this run this Chinese run just keeps going and going. So. I mean, hopefully it goes up to like 20 or something because then it'll be an even better short. But this one does have options. I did find some puts that are pretty liquid, you know, going out a couple months or so. So I'm keeping this one on watch too. UXI is another one. That one went, that's a better one. That went one from 150 to nine or eight. And let's see if that's a flag. It looks like, yeah, that could be a flag still. Like the sell volume wasn't, much on that on that top day there when it topped out there 
So yeah, it's still, still hanging in there. I mean, maybe this one will go like 20 or something. Who knows? But I want to see a, a really good first red day on these because when you short these spikers, you've got to wait for the, the technical weakness. And it's safest just to wait for the first red day, the first red long body candle. But you kind of had one today, but, it, but the volume is so light. It's just not indicative of a, a top there. Because the thing to do is watch the volume on any kind of smaller market cap stock, bring it less than you know 10 billion or something. You're gonna get a pretty good read on the volume, and that's one of the reasons I also like trading trading smaller price stocks and smaller market cap is you can see the volume as a as a signal a lot, whereas you know something like Apple or Google or Starbucks or something, you know, it's not the volume is going to be pretty similar a lot of times, and like it won't even be a signal when there's high volume. You know, it's just it's just just put more a lot more program trades, and I guess there's more market makers, you know, on these um, that aren't using program trades. There's a lot of retail on these smaller ones, obviously too, so that helps. So that's the other one I was watching, short bias. So that's the Chinese ones. Let's move on to, let's move on to the things I'm seeing today in, in, in the AI. The, of course, we know the AI trade's been strong for a long time now. And it looks like they had another breakthrough with, the, with these AI models. I mean, th this isn't old news. This has been out like a week or two. But they found a, another breakthrough with the, they call it reasoning. It's actually reasoning. So these AI models can reason now, which is kind of incredible. And it was this post here, this um, on this T Sarnix. He he covers all the AI stuff, and I follow a few accounts. I mean, I follow multiple accounts on, on here that that cover AI. I want to follow this because it's it's a pretty obvious theme and. To me, it's a secular theme. It's a, a long-term theme, uh, similar to the internet. You didn't really see the dominance of the big internet companies like Amazon until later. So we're still early in the AI theme. And this kind of cements it to where they keep having these breakthroughs. So that's the thing you want to see is there has to be a reason to keep scaling the data centers and you know keep investing in the capex because these these big tech companies are spending hundreds of billions. I mean, in no time they'll spend like a trillion dollars or more, like trillions of dollars on 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 AI infrastructure. For them all to get it wrong is would be pretty incredible. So they it's definitely going to be a a big industry like like the internet was all the tech companies are on the same thing you know it's you got you got to pay attention to that and I mean that would kind of be like you know back when meta invested heavily in like the metaverse it was as far as I know it was mostly it was just them and that was that didn't pan out because it was just one company yeah this, this really cements the big picture to me how it's, the theme is going to continue and the, they're just going to keep building more data centers. So lately I've had a lot of short side trades going pretty well. Like I had some puts just recently. The Bido was pretty good trade. And I'm just watching a lot of these ones on my watch list because there's everything spiking up, of course. So I'm watching these like the RGB is still on my short biased watch list. And Peloton, Peloton, it's respecting this level there. So if it breaks below this level, this 41 or 440 area, rather, if it breaks below that area there, I might buy some puts on it because I'm, I'm long-term bearish on Peloton. Yeah, you can see it respected that level back there too. It traded, it's traded in the channel. So it's back in the channel again, just like uh, February, April. So we'll see, it probably, if it trades like it did in the past, it'll just keep going sideways a little bit, but 
but we'll see what happens with that. It's not my favorite right now because like a lot of these stocks are just just keep spiking. So I've had to be really selective with my short side trades with the puts. And yeah, that's my only other really strong one. I mean, the CHGG, I believe that one had a little pop too. It looks like maybe it came down again today. Wow, yeah. See, this one hasn't even, as the market's been pop, like going up, this one hasn't even had a, any gains. So I'm just going to stick with my plan, just putting on some long dated puts on this one, like January or um, maybe March. So that's another one. And the other one that I've been, it's been doing really well for me is the Turkey one, like the Turkey trade. I was watching this market go up for a long time. I was watching the, the Turkey stock market break out and well, actually it's kind of slowly breaking out and it was going sideways, but the economy is not doing too well here. They've got really high inflation. It's like 50% inflation rate. And the central bank's been trying to fight that for some time, it looks like. And 50% inflation is just not good. And to me, there was like a disconnect with the stock market and the, this inflation. Yeah, just from from recent history, you know, you got these countries with the you know, inflation that high, it's never going to be really good. And it's just a, uh, it seems like some trouble for the, the economy. So the stock market should reflect that. It's, and it looks like it finally is the past couple months. So that's a top, double top. You got a, you know, a huge uh, level there that sort of acted as the, the main level for that top to confirm. So it confirmed the breakdown there. And then it's just, it looks like I haven't checked this today. It actually made another low today. So we got new lows again, new uh, lows on this pullback. So this could, I see this playing out a good bit because the, like I was saying, you know, the economy doesn't seem doing like it's doing too well there. And I was trying to find as many ADRs, American depository receipts, ADRs as I could to, to buy puts on. Uh, I don't believe the options were liquid on Turkey or on this ETF, but I have to recheck that because that's like the best way to really play it to me. You know, obviously just short the market or, you know, puts on the market, but I've had this TKC on for a while now. I put these TKC, this Turk cell puts on. So I watched, I watched this one go up too. I mean, this is just like an incredible run. I actually posted the breakout on my Twitter way back there and it just kept going and then the momentum died there. And then it's got the same situation. It just it looks, it's the exact same chart almost as the, the Turkey ETF, the Turkey stock market. So you got, you know, double top and then this really strong channel that keeps, it's going about to go back into again if it breaks, which I assume, it, I think it's, it will break below this because the, the Turkey just did too. So, so we got this channel that it's been trading down into. So my hunch is, my hunch is it's going to go obviously back into this down channel. Of course, the the support line's hard to find because there's just these huge sell-offs, but I've just been watching that, that downtrend channel and it uh, looks like it's about to go back into that. So my puts are up pretty big right now. I'm up like, uh, let's see. I bought them when the premium was 30 and it's like 85 now. So we're well over 100%. I mean, getting close to 200% there. Um, so I'm gonna have to take some of that off because uh, they do my puts are just till October 18th, but it's still a while. So, but I do expect that to play out too. I mean, the next the next big level is not till down here. You know, if the sell off continues in, in the Turkish equities, so you know there's a lot of upside still on these puts. So I may have to look for some more some more Turkey ADRs, but I mean this was like the best one. As, to me that was it was trading like it was trading with um high beta to the index
so that's about that's about it. I mean, of course, you, you just watch the XLUs up every day, and I'm gonna keep looking for these companies that that are gonna benefit from this uh, this rampant data center production still still ongoing. So yeah, this of course the, it's alternative energy companies like nuclear and there's just all kinds. You know, there's hydro hydro geothermal solar. And we've seen all of those. <laughs> we've seen so far the news news flow that I've been seeing. A lot of all these companies are benefiting from some some contracts with uh, the data centers and the utilities are. They're gonna hook them up, you know, to these data centers. So yeah, that's about it. that's all I want to cover for today. So keep it short, but I'll catch you next time.